Hello, welcome back. This is Revenues, Expenses, Dividends, and Basic Financial Statement Creation Part 2. I'm Bennett Tchaikovsky. Uh, disclaimer and copyright notice, the information and opinions in this presentation are those of the author only and not the author's employers or affiliated organizations, including, but not limited to, Irvine Valley College, the South Orange County Community College District, or Chapman University. This presentation is for educational purposes only and does not account, it does not constitute any legal or accounting advice whatsoever. The presentation is copyright 2008 to 2019 by Bennett Tchaikovsky. I encourage you to share this presentation and share links to this presentation on an unmodified basis. If you modify the presentation in any way, please email me prior to doing so at bennett1812 at gmail.com to discuss. Note, the author does not claim any copyright whatsoever in any companies or organizations mentioned in this presentation. Rather, the other parties are the owners of their respective copyrights. So, up until now, we were briefly going through and looking at an income statement, which is revenues minus expenses, gives me a net income or a net loss. How do we record revenues and expenses using T accounts? And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna explore the interrelation between the three financial statements, the income statement, the statement of retained earnings, and our balance sheet. Now, notice here, the one thing I did not do was uh, include a statement of cash flows. I don't teach the statement of cash flows until the end of whatever the semester is. And the reason why, it's hard. Okay, and it's something that it encompasses a lot of the different concepts in the other chapters. It is a great question to give on a final exam. I, I don't know what else to say, but it's not, if you look at the statement of cash flows, you're really talking about how did I get from my beginning to my ending balance? It's an important statement, but it's more of an ancillary statement. I don't, it's not a core statement. Rather, we need to be looking at these three. If I don't have these three here, this is pretty much meaningless. And I'm really not going to look at the statement of cash flows till later. If you need help with the statement of cash flows now, I've got some videos that I've already done at, Liz, at the, uh, a little bit early, later on last year. So you can find those on my YouTube channel. So, how do the financial statements interrelate? So what I've done here is I've kind of come up with something very, very basic. So if we have a company, we have an income statement for the period ending December 31st, 2019. We have our revenues here minus our expenses gives us our net income. Okay, once we have this net income, where does it travel to? Well. The net income was generated by the business. So what then happens is, is it's gonna go first to what we call the statement of retained earnings. Retained earnings means the earnings of the corporation or that net income or net loss that the company is in fact retaining. So here we have a statement of retained earnings for the period ending December 31st, 2019. The way the statement of retaining earnings works, it's our beginning retained earnings plus our net income minus any dividends, which I will talk about on our next video, gives us our ending retained earnings. What happens with ending retained earnings is that this ultimately becomes a part of owner's equity on our balance sheet. Now you might be saying, Tchaikovsky, where did you get these things? I pulled them out of my donkey. Okay, and I just made it up. So there you go. Thank you, Luca. So here I've got a balance sheet. My assets equals my liabilities plus my total owner's equity, A-E-L-O-E. -E. But this is how the net income is going to travel over here to our retained earnings. So what I mentioned before is that our revenues, expenses, and dividends are what we call our temporary accounts. And as temporary accounts, they're gonna be closed out at the end of the period to retain earnings. So that's kind of how these financial state, how the financial statements interrelate. Very, very important chart. And let's go through. And how do we go through and do the setup? So if you did the balance sheet with me earlier, what we did was, is we recorded all transactions in the T accounts, we prepared a trial balance 
And then we skipped over here to do the balance sheet. That's what we were doing before when we were having our December 31st accounting party. This is different. Okay, so this is different and why? Because now we have revenues and expenses. We have these temporary accounts. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm gonna follow the same steps. I'm gonna report all transactions. I'm gonna prepare a trial balance. I'm gonna prepare an income statement. I'm gonna prepare a statement of retained earnings. But then over here, I'm gonna then close out the temporary accounts, revenue and expenses and dividends to retain earnings. I'm gonna make sure that when I close out my temporary accounts to retain earnings that this ending balance is the same as over here, as that ending balance in that statement of retained earnings. Then I'm gonna prepare a post-closing trial balance, which is gonna show that all my temporary accounts are now zero, and it's gonna show that new ending balance in retained earnings. And then I'm gonna go and prepare a balance sheet using A-E-L-O-E, A-E-L-O-E. So that's what I'm gonna go through and do. So that's kind of the new steps that we're going through and adding at this point in time. And now we're gonna get into an example. And our example here is for Dewey, Suom, and Hal, basic financial statement creation. Um, so we've got on January 1st, Ivana Suyu and Chase Ambulance form Dewey, Suom, and Hal, a personal injury law firm, by each contributing 50 grand in exchange for the common stock of DSH. During the year, we performed some services, we had some expenses. And so it's asking us uh, to do some things down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to our Google Sheet. Okay, and we're back. So um, let's go ahead and start recording transactions. So the first one here is on January 1st, 2020, Ivana and Chase formal law firm by each contributing $50,000 in exchange for the common stock of DSH. So we are doing this from the perspective of DSH. So what's happening here? Well, DSH is receiving cash and how much cash are they receiving? They're receiving 50,000 from Ivana and 50,000 from Chase for a total of $100,000. If this, and how do I record the receipt of cash? If I go and look here at my T-theory of accounting, which I can craft up for you right here. Uh, let's put it, we'll just write up here, why not? So if I have, I've got D, C, got E, R, and then I have assets equals liabilities plus my owner's equity. So here I'm receiving cash. Cash is an asset. I show that increase over here with the debit. Why is it a hundred grand? Well, Chase and Ivana are each contributing $50,000. So for every debit I need a credit, here I'm gonna credit common stock, and I will credit common stock here for the 100,000. As I go through and do this, I can write the little transaction by each one of my T accounts to help me go through here. And there we go. Okay, so that's transaction number one. Does it make sense that I'm crediting common stock? Well, yeah, I'm increasing it because I'm issuing it to Chase and Ivana. And by, if common stock is a part of owner's equity, so I'm gonna show an increase to my owner's equity with a credit. So, okay, let's make these a little bit cozier. There we go, perfect, okay. So, next one here is during the year ended December 31st, I received $150,000 cash by performing legal services. Upon completion of legal services, DSH had no further obligations to their clients. Let's do the easy part first. I received $150,000 in cash. Okay, so right here, I'm going to be debiting cash for 150,000. For every debit, I need a credit. What am I going to be crediting? I've performed legal services. 
okay? This is what we call services revenue, okay? Notice here, it's not unearned revenue. Why? I've done all of the work. If I, had, if I got the money as an advance for future services to be performed, this would be unearned revenue or a liability. But because I have gone through and I have performed the services, I'm gonna show this here as a credit. Does this make sense with our T-theory of accounting? How do I record revenues with a credit? Remember, when you're going through and recording transactions, always has to make sense with this. And this will really save you come exam time. So that is number two. During the year ended, I paid a paralegal $55,000 cash. So what's happening here? Okay, so my cash is going down. And this is transaction three. And uh, call this a paralegal consultant. $55,000 cash. So what's happening here? So I paid a paralegal consultant $55,000 cash. Cash went down. For every credit, I need a debit. Okay, this right here is something we're gonna call paralegal or consulting expense. Why is it an expense is because I use this in the production of my income. When I pay a paralegal, this is part of my cost for generating this services revenue. Paralegals generally assist attorneys. Some paralegals even do the work of lawyers. But right over here, when I'm looking at my services revenue list number two, and when I'm going through and looking at this, I'm crediting cash because I'm paying that paralegal. When I'm paying cash, it's going down. I show that decrease to an asset with a credit. At the same time, I'm not getting an asset back. Rather, I'm paying someone for services that they perform for me. So I'm going to be showing that as a debit to paralegal or consulting expense. Last one right here is I purchased equipment costing $15,000 on account from Ambulances R Us Inc. I will pay Ambul Ambulances R Us Inc. for the equipment in 30 days. Okay, so I'm, this, is a, this should be very, very familiar to you because we did something very close to this in our, one of our prior videos, but here I'm receiving equipment. Equipment is an asset. I'm gonna show an increase in that asset with a debit. And this is caught, this equipment here is costing me $15,000. So, got here this debit for $15,000. For every debit, I need a credit. Am I paying for this in cash? The answer is no. When you see on account, it means that cash is not being paid immediately. It will be paid later. And in this case, I'm gonna pay them for the equipment in 30 days. So what do I wanna call this? I can call it one of several things. I can call it a note payable, or I could call it an account payable. Do I call it a loan payable? Well, a loan really uh, kind of means that it's like I'm borrowing money, which I'm not, I'm getting equipment, and I'm gonna pay it back later. So you can either call it a note payable or an account payable. Why am I using the term note? Because it's involving um, equipment. So I would accept either answer. Okay, so that's, those are my transactions. So we've gone through and done this. And what do I need to do now? Well, the process of doing this is really no different than what we did before when we were doing our balance sheet. So when we, now what we need to do is we need to make sure that our total debits equal our total credits. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have DSH, trial balance, 12, 31, was this 19? What date did I use? I think I used 20. At 12, 31, 20. I'm gonna make this video seem fresh in 2020, even though it was so long ago. 12, 31, 20. Okay, so right over here, debit and credit. Now, if you watch the videos previously, the way I did this is I set this up as assets 
liabilities, owners, equity. Why did I do that? Because when I go do the balance sheet, it's gonna be a lot easier for me to go through and do. Now, the difference here though, is when I'm doing this part, is that I also now have revenue and expense accounts. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create revenue and I'm gonna have expense accounts. And the reason why is this is the AE, LOE, and then I'm gonna have my income statement or revenues minus expenses. So I total up cash, I received 100,000 from my shareholders, and then I got 150,000 by providing services for a total of 250,000. I paid a paralegal consultant 55,000, so my ending cash balance is going to be 195. So my first asset here is going to be a debit for 195,000. The only other asset I have is the equipment here for 15,000. And so for my equipment, it's going to be 15,000. Now, some of you may be saying, well, Tchaikovsky, what about the depreciation on that equipment? Well, those for those people, we don't do that until the next uh, segment. I do all of my equipment purchases on December 31st. The reason why is mainly because I don't want you to be computing depreciation at this point in time. When I see textbooks that are showing equipment being bought on December 1st, it drives me absolutely uh, bonkers because it's not correct. So that's my equipment and my cash. Let's go over to our liabilities. So here for my liabilities, I have a note payable or an account payable. Let's move this around a bit and make this lower case. So for my liabilities, I had a note or account payable, and this here was for 15,000. I do not have any other types of liabilities. Remember, the services revenue is a revenue, it is not a liability. So it's my services revenue, or excuse me, that's my note counter note payable. And now I go to my next section, which here is going to be owner's equity. Now, when we're doing this type of problem, we're gonna have two different types of um, owner's equity accounts. We're gonna have common stock right here, which is gonna be a credit balance of 100,000. And my other owner's equity account is going to be retained earnings. I'm gonna leave this right here as a placeholder because we're gonna to have to close out balances to it later. But as of right now, because we haven't done any of the closing, it has a zero balance. Here for my revenue, I'm gonna have services revenue and my services revenue is gonna to total 150,000 credit. And here for my expenses, I have paralegal or consulting expense of 55,000. So at this point in time, well, all I have gone through and done is I've totaled up my T accounts and I've put these on to an unadjusted draw balance. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I need to make sure that my total debits equal my total credits. So here, my total debits are going to be 265, my total credits are also going to be 265. So my total debits equal my total credits. Therefore, I can go to the next phase. What exactly is the next phase? The next phase is what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna prepare an income statement and we're also gonna be preparing our statement of retained earnings. So for our income statement, so we have DSH income statement for the year ending 12-31-20. What do we do on an income statement? We're showing our revenues, 
total revenues, less expenses, total expenses, and then this is gonna give me my net income. So my revenues here are services revenue for 150,000. So my total services revenue is gonna be right over here at 150. Now notice here, when I am preparing financial statements, I do not, I do not whatsoever show any debit or credit. Do you notice any debits or credits here? No, we don't see them at all. We do not put those on financial statements. God, I'm sounding really angry. But we don't put those onto financial statements. We just say what the balances are. I'm showing this over here to the right, just so we, if we have more expenses or revenues in the future, it'll be easier to follow along. Then, my, so my total revenue is 150. For my expenses, uh, my paralegal or my consulting expense here was 55. My total expenses are gonna be $55,000. And when I come up here with my net income, my net income is going to be my revenues minus my expenses for a total of $95,000. So that is my net income. Okay, so I've done the income statement. My, my financial statement formatting really freaks out students, so I wanna apologize in advance. Okay, so and how did I get that? If I call this A, I call this B, my net income is equal to my revenues minus my expenses. Now, the next financial statement that we're gonna go through and prepare, and again, we're, if we're kind of following down here in terms of, where did we go? We're kind of doing this right here. We've prepared the income statement. Now we're gonna prepare the statement of retained earnings. So for our statement of retain earnings, for the year ended 12-31-20, what does this look like? Beginning retain earnings plus any net income minus any dividends. I put that little apostrophe up front so it doesn't make a calculation is going to give me ending retained earnings. My beginning retained earnings was zero. This was my first year of operations. My net income was right here at $95,000. I'm gonna start doing some color coding because it's fun. Okay, I had no dividends being paid out to my shareholders. We're gonna see that in a later chapter. So here my ending retained earnings is $95,000. Now, what I need to do at this point is that I've come to the end of the year or the end of the period. So what I need to do is that my revenue and my expense accounts are what we call temporary accounts. So I need to close out these accounts to retain earnings. So what we're gonna do over here is we're gonna have a T account here for retained earnings. We're gonna have rev services revenue. And then we're gonna have paralegal expense. And all I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna be drawing, pulling these down here from the original T accounts. Uh, this is something I'm kind of particular about in my classes just because I don't want to use something called income summary. Um, a lot of instructors, what they'll do is they'll have you close out revenue and expenses to income summary. Uh, that's the way to do it. For me, it's a waste of time. Uh, rather, what I do is I want everything closed out directly to retain earnings. And we're going to go do that right now. My beginning retain earnings balance was zero. And the reason why it was zero is not just because I wrote it up here, but they formed the business this year. So there was no prior operations. So when I'm closing out T accounts, what I need, when I'm closing out revenue and expenses, what I need to do is I need to figure out is what do I need to do to make this account zero? So right here, 
what I'm going to go through and do is and sorry just for them one moment okay okay so here to make services revenue zero what I need to do right here is to make this zero. Well, if I have a credit for 150,000, I need a debit here for 150. I'm gonna put this in a little bit of a different uh, kind of, uh, we'll call this, we'll do red. Okay, so right over here, so for every debit, so for every, so I have here a balance of 150. I need to make services revenue zero. How do I make it zero? I'm going to debit services revenue for 150,000. When I debit this for 150,000, the ending balance in my T account is zero. But for every debit, I need a credit. So what I'm gonna do is do the opposite here to retained earnings. Okay, this is a very, very important step. We're looking at this, uh-oh, wow, what did I just do? It's not, it looks like fun. What I need to go through here and do, a lot more fun than this class. What I need to go through here and do is for every debit, I need a credit. So I'm crediting my retained earnings here by 150,000. When I do that, the services revenue account is closed out to zero. But I'm not done. I have to close out all temporary accounts to retain earnings. So here for paralegal expense, I have a $55,000 balance. What do I need to do to make that account go to zero? I need a credit for $55,000. And we'll mark this here in blue. So when I debit this, when I, excuse me, when I credit paralegal expense for 55,000, my ending balance here is zero. Now. When I've credited this account here, for every credit, I need a debit. So I'm going to be debiting retained earnings for $55,000. And when I go through and I debit retained earnings for 55,000, my ending balance in retained earnings is going to be right over here. And it's going to be, let's see, well, I had a beginning of zero plus my revenues of 150, credits here of 55. My ending balance here is 95,000 credit. Does that make sense? Liabilities and equity accounts have credit balances. So when we are looking at retained earnings, this should have a credit balance if in fact the number was positive, which is true in our case. So this 95,000 that I'm computing over here, and this is how you can make sure if you've done the work correctly. So my retained earnings balance is here, is at 95,000, which is the same balance as over here. Again, you might be looking at this example and saying, Tchaikovsky, wow, I could have done this so much easier. Trust me. When I start throwing five expenses, two revenues, a dividend, and a partridge and a pear tree, you're gonna be happy that you learned it this way. Because by doing it this way, you're gonna really better understand it. So I've done my next step, which was going through and closing out all of my, the temporary accounts to retain earnings via T accounts. That was that step right there. So again, let's recap. First thing I do, I go through and I record the transactions into T accounts. That's no different than what we were doing before. Second thing I'm going to do is create an unadjusted trial balance. What's the trial balance? The unadjusted trial balance. I'm taking all of my various different T accounts and I'm just putting them right here. I'm putting the balances in the T accounts and the reason why I do this is I need to make sure that my total debits equal my total credits. Once I've done this, I then prepare an income statement. What's the income statement? Revenues minus expenses. So here I had a net income of 95. What about retain earnings? So after I do my income statement, then I do my retain earnings, meaning what of the income is being kept by the company. Remember, the statement of retain earnings is the linkage between the income statement and the balance sheet. This is how they're interconnected. 
So right over here, I've got over the, I've got the statement of retain earnings. My beginning plus my net income minus my dividends gives me ending retain earnings. How do I know if I've done this correctly? Well, if I use T accounts and I bring forth the um, revenue expenses and dividend accounts, and I make those accounts zero by closing them out to retain earnings, when I get to this ending part, so services revenue had $150,000 credit from right up here, to make it zero, I needed $150,000 debit. For every debit, I need a credit, so I'm going to credit retain earnings. Similarly, paralegal expense had a $55,000 debit. I need to credit paralegal expense to make it zero. I debit retain earnings because for every debit, I need a credit. For every credit, I need a debit. My ending balance and retain earnings is 95,000. Why 95? 55,000 of debits, 150 of credits. Subtract the smaller from the greater, and I get down to 100. So I get, I get down to 95,000. Okay. My next step is I'm going to go through and prepare a post-closing, the yeah, post-closing trial balance. And this is going to be as of 12, 31, 20, but I don't really care about how these are formatted mainly because um, it's, it's a trial balance. So. Right here when I'm doing my post-closing trial balance, the only thing that's changed are what are the accounts that I close. I close the revenue and expense accounts and I increase my retained earnings. So what this will look like is that I'm not gonna change at all. My assets have not changed. I did not close out any of those balances. And here, my liabilities did not change either. I still have over here 15,000 bucks in a note payable. My owner's equity, my common stock has also has not changed. This is still going to be $100,000. However, for retained earnings, my new ending retained earnings balance is going to be right here $95,000. So, the retain earnings is the linkage between the accounts. It gets increased when we're getting that income and decrease with dividends. So right here, my revenue account for services revenue, this balance here is now going to be zero because why? I closed it out to retain earnings. Very, very important concept. And then over here for my expenses, I have this paralegal consulting expense. This balance has also now been taken down to zero because I closed out the account. And now when I look at this in terms of my post-closing trial balance, I have here a total of debits of 210, total credits of 210. My total debits still have to equal my total credits. What went on here? The only thing that's changing between these two trial balances is when I close out my temporary accounts. This 150 and 95 are becoming a net $95,000. So that is my post-closing trial balance. The last thing we're gonna be asked to do for DSH is going to be our balance sheet. So for our balance sheet for DSH, this is the AELOE. So I'm gonna have my assets, which are gonna be cash and my equipment. So my total assets are going to be 210,000. On my other side over here, what's the next thing I need to go through and show are my liabilities. My liabilities had a note payable slash account payable. Okay, I'll just call this, um, yeah, I'll just call it note payable. Right over here is 15,000. Notice no debit or credit. We don't do that on our balance sheets. So my total liabilities are gonna be 15 grand. So once I go through and compute my total liabilities here, now I'm gonna go to my owner's equity. 
what is in my owner's equity? I have my common stock of 100,000, and then I have the earnings that are retained that the, I did not distribute back to my shareholders in the amount of 95,000. So here, my total owner's equity is going to be 195,000. Last part I have to do is I have to show total liabilities plus owner's equity. is going to be 210,000. Or, let's see, C, E, C plus D equals E, there we go. So that is a very, very basic financial statement, statement problem. However, these are the steps that you need to go through and do. And I cannot emphasize the importance of practice. It can look really easy if I'm going through and doing this on a Google Sheet and talking it through and it's putting you to sleep or whatever else you're using this video for. But at the end of the day, when we're going through and doing this to be successful in accounting, you have to practice. It is pure repetition. The more times you repeat these types of questions, the easier it's going to be for you to go through and tackle these problems. So I wanna thank you for joining me today and I will see you on the next video. Have a great one.